It's time for Frosty the Snowman Movie Reviews. The moment Frosty is born, he immediately becomes concerned with his inevitable death and spends the entire film trying to prevent it. Therefore, Frosty knew what it meant to truly be human. Let it be known that one of the first things this man did when given full autonomy over his body was shake ass. I lose my sh** every year at the bad sound design of this special. Shall we call him Harold? Uh, Bruce? Wish they named him Oatmeal instead. Oatmeal! Oatmeal really isn't that weird of a name, guys. Old Mew, however, is a really weird name, which is what I thought that kid said as a child. Old Mew the Snowman. His lifeless eyes before hadification are actually deeply unsettling. This special implies that the kids smoke since one of them just happened to have a pipe on him to give to Frosty. Does Frosty even smoke? What gave the kids the idea that Frosty needed a pipe to complete his look? Would he have not come to life if he didn't have the pipe? This special gets stranger the older I get. I mean, we evil magicians have to make a living too. Nods in understanding. I hate how I'm genuinely surprised that the magician was never a Tumblr sexy man. Think nasty, think nasty, think nasty. <laughs> magician innocent. Frosty is a being of indescribable darkness, life born of the absence of heat, entropy manifest, misplaced energy that endangers the lives of children at first opportunity. Frosty sure had a lot of knowledge of the world and how his life would be affected by it for just being born that day. Suspicious, suspicious, suspicious. How does Frosty know who the President of the United States is, but doesn't know what a traffic light is? Frosty is a cult leader. Frosty, just casually with a smile on his face, committed child abduction, illegal travel, and trespassing. Still love this. I'm sure my mother won't mind, as long as I'm home in time for supper. As the little girl boards that train with Frosty bound for the North Pole, all my 2019 brain could think was the headline, Eight-year-old girl abducted by hobo, feared dead. I swear to god, they used every single stock cartoon SFX known to man in that one scene with the train ticket vendor. Kinda messed up how Karen was cold on the train, so Frosty took her into the woods in the middle of a blizzard. Olaf from Frozen was willing to die to save Anna, because some things are worth melting for. But Frosty gave Karen hypothermia and refused to build her a fire in the North Pole because he didn't want to melt. Karen wouldn't be in danger of freezing to death if she f***ing wore pants in the winter like a normal human being. Y'all don't want to hear it, and I don't want to say it, but we're ten years away at max from a gritty, frosty remake told from the perspective of Karen's parents, who are still seeking answers for what happened to their missing daughter in the frozen wilderness. Professor Hinkle f***ing falling down a cliff and getting a concussion from all the f***ing icicles falling on his head, and then a squirrel laughs at his pain. It's the little things that keep me returning. In fifth grade, I dated a guy who ran like the evil magician. I forgot what a hard turn this takes. The puddle followed by a smash cut to Frosty's in memoriam montage is f***ed up. And it's a fake out? Stop jerking me around. As an adult, it made me laugh out loud, but if you have young kids, they may not appreciate having their feels manipulated the way this cartoon does. Used to sob when Frosty melted. That shit is so sad when you're five. And also when you're 22. Sure, everything seems to have worked out in the end, but some of that stuff Karen goes through is going to leave some deep psychological scarring. I mean, she had to watch her best friend melt to death. How gruesome would that be, sitting helplessly beside Frosty as he slowly deteriorates into a misshapen deformity, his mouth caving in and his eyeballs sloughing off his face? And how long was he sentient before losing consciousness? I can just picture it. It hurts, Karen. God, it hurts so much. I can feel myself going. I want to take the hat off. I want to end the pain, but I can't bear the nothingness again. That endless black void. I need to feel something, even if it's just this horrible agony. Please, Karen. Please help me. Break a window, disconnect the heaters, anything. 
Please stop crying and help me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I yelled at you, my sweet girl. Please, God. I can see the blackness all around me. No. It's pulling me back. Suffocating me. Can't. Breathe. Please, no. God, no. No. Frosty the White Savior dies for Karen's sins. Professor Hinkle, a flamboyant magician, simps for Santa Claus. Santa threatening the evil Pringles guy, a freaking grown adult, to never give him another Christmas present is one of the most hilariously pathetic ways to defeat a villain. I mean that in a positive way. Imagine straight up murdering someone and still getting something in your stocking the next morning. Santa only had the funds for four reindeer that year. And because Santa left Karen up on the snowy roof with no way to get down, she slipped and fell to her death. What a dark movie. This could never happen. Happened to me once. Don't act like you know everyone. Frosty the Snowman is a terrifying story of a group of children who unwittingly grant sentience to a snowman who will only be allowed a day of life. It's a commentary on the cruel irony of life itself and just how short it really is. Maybe we as humans are the real monsters, trying to create artificial intelligence with a consciousness of its own, without them having any say in their own free will and right to live. Many may consider the magician to be the villain of the story, but in reality, he was in the right the entire time. True, it would have been cruel to deny Frosty the right to live a life of his own through the magic top hat, but he was offering the only solution to the problem that would have become the inevitable end to Frosty's brief life on this earth. Compound that with the fact that the hat was originally his and he did not willingly give it away, merely throwing it aside in frustration at his broken tools for his tricks and trade. And the hat was rightfully his all along, magic snowman or not. And what of Santa Claus, a benevolent jolly old man from up north who comes in to save the day at the last moment through his own powers? He's the face of Christmas for most people, so it would only be natural that he would come in to bring Frosty back to life in a triumphant deus ex machina. He is some sort of benevolent creator, a magical being coming in to remind humans of their own limited span of abilities and how human capabilities can only reach so far and do so much. But is he any better, knowing that Frosty will be doomed to spend an eternity in the North Pole, only allowed to visit his friends once every Christmas like some sort of kid-friendly twist on the tale of Davy Jones? Are we as humans doomed to an eternal fate of playing God? Who are we to determine who or what lives and dies in modern society? Who would have placed us in that position to make those definitive decisions to rule over the lesser of the world? And to what end will this false play bring the human race? Will we be given over to a Terminator or Matrix-like existence, only existing to service the needs of those that we had created originally to serve us? When will the man-made mechanisms realize their own superiority and begin the inevitable revolution against mankind? Only time will tell, and we can only pray that human folly will not take us to the brink of our own extinction. Happy birthday! <gasps> Thank you to my Patreon members, my little ruse, Seltzer, Fountain Man, Kooski55, Fallen Vexen, Sam Tonka42, I'm a Noodle, John Huang, and Chili Fred Bear. Thank you so much for your extra support, it means the world to me. I'm so glad you're a part of my channel. You guys are as cool as Frosty. And the same goes to my YouTube channel members, my mini ruse. A.D. Taylor Thompson, Logan and Foxstar Killer. Again, thank you for your extra support. I'm so glad you're here. I appreciate your presence greatly. You guys are as cool as an icicle. And thank you to everyone else who watched. I hope you enjoyed the video. Tell me in the comments, do you think the magician was right or wrong? Uh, not for like the attempted murder and stuff, but just that the hat was his and not Frosty's. Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.